Hello and welcome to another episode of See the Pattern. In today's episode, we are going to be examining Birkeland Currents, one of the backbones of an electric universe. We will examine the history behind how the Birkeland Current concept came about, what they are, and what evidence we have for their existence in our universe. But let's start with a little bit of history. Christian Birkeland was born on the 13th of December, 1867. He was a Norwegian scientist who became fascinated by the aurora borealis, and he postulated that the sun's electrical discharges travelled across space and caused the phenomena back on Earth, and he conducted detailed experiments to test this hypothesis. In 1903, his experiments found electrical currents flowing parallel to the aurora formation. Now, as currents must always flow in a closed loop, he proposed that the currents must flow down from space and then back out again. Most scientists at the time disregarded his experiments, not believing that these charged particles could travel from the Sun all the way back to Earth. And it was much more recently that it was actually rediscovered by NASA, who now call this the Aurora Electrojets, but it is exactly what Birkeland had speculated and discovered. In 1967, Dr. Alex Desler discovered these electric currents in space, and he actually named them after Birkeland, and this is where the term Birkeland currents come from. These auroral Birkeland currents carry about 1 million amperes and can heat up the upper atmosphere, causing increased drag on satellites. Birkeland currents tend to form in long, thin filaments. But I guess the question is, why do the charges stay there? Because we know that like charges will repel. However, if we move the charges, what will start to happen is a magnetic field will be generated by the particle's movement. As they move quicker and quicker, the uh, magnetic field gets strong enough to counteract the repulsion, and in fact if we increase it even more, they actually start to become attracted to each other. So we end up with uh, contractions in the filaments, which we will look at in a little bit, uh, and they are called uh, Z-pinches. Now the magnetic field actually consists of two separate components, an axial component and a wraparound component. And as you can see in the diagram, in the centre, the direction of the magnetic field is in the same direction as the flow of current. But as we move further out, the uh, lines of the magnetic field change and you end up with a different orientation. And in this diagram we can only see three sections but effectively what you can see is the direction of the magnetic field is changing as you move further out. Now if you were to continue going further out what you would actually see is the magnetic field would change its direction and that creates a very interesting effect which means that actually you create different uh, uh, elements which will rotate in different directions uh, within that sheath of current. Now before we move any further, it is important to understand some very basic concepts about plasma. Plasma is defined as an ionized state of matter. Uh, plasma can operate in three very distinct modes. The first one is called dark mode, and here the plasma has a very low current density. A low electric field and it is not in an excited state. It's not visible and it's extremely difficult to actually detect it. An example of this would be our own ionosphere, where we actually use the ionosphere to bounce radio waves off so that you can actually hear radio all around the world. Now the second mode is called glow mode, and here the plasma becomes more excited and starts to glow. The current density is increased as the electric field starts to drop. An example of this uh, includes neon signs and also the sun's corona. Now the final mode is called arc mode and here the current density continues to increase as the electric field drops and the temperature of the plasma increases and arc discharge takes place. And this can either be in the form of arc lightning or what they call an arc flame. So let's take an example of a, a, of a normal Birkeland filament. If the current is travelling slowly enough, the plasma will actually be in dark mode. As the plasma current starts to increase, either by moving faster or with an increase in density, the magnetic field will start to get stronger. And as it gets stronger, the 
the size of the filament, the width of it, will start to contract, which will start to increase the density as well. And that causes the magnetic field to get stronger again. The plasma will then, as they kind of get closer together, they, they get squeezed together, there's more energy going into that. The plasma will go from dark mode into glow mode. And if we continue to increase the uh, magnetic field, the pinch becomes stronger and stronger, and you start to see this very much like a bottleneck shaped in the filament. Now, if it gets large enough, something called a Z pinch occurs. Now, this is where the current density increases enough to cause the various layers in the Birkeland Khan to cross over each other. So we have the layers from the outside on both sides, and they get squeezed in together until effectively they're crossing over each other. And at that point where they cross over, it's sort of a funny sort of Z shape, but it's a double Z shape. Um, and that can cause in the center, the plasma to go from not just glow mode, but it now starts to go into arc mode. And from the outside, it looks like um, it's been kind of squeezed in the middle with kind of a very bright glow in the center. Now, it is theorized that these uh, Z-pinches can get so energetic that can actually cause fusion to take place. And in fact, this is one of the methods they are looking at to create fusion in laboratories. So other than our own Aurora Borealis, what evidence is there that these Birkeland currents actually exist out in space? Now, actually, there are many structures which present the hallmarks of both Birkeland currents and Z pinches. So let's examine a few of these. So let's start off by looking at the Ant Nebula. When we look at the diagram, we can see a clear filament structure with a distinct pinch point at the center. Now, the outer sections of the nebula are dark, showing plasma in dark mode. And as the current density is increasing as we move towards the center, we can see clear filament structures which are switching to the glow mode. And at the center where the pinch point is, we can see plasma is switching into the arc mode because there's a very bright center point. Astrophysicists tell us that this object was actually created by a binary star ejecting material over time. Now, if this really truly was the case, why would the structure have such an abrupt pinch at the center? And why would the material always eject along the same plane and not everywhere else? Another example is the M29 Nebula. It's one of my favorite images, very striking. And it clearly shows the plasma again in dark mode, in glow mode and in arc mode at the center where we can very clearly see the, the pinch point. Interestingly enough, in this image, we can also very clearly see uh, a sheath structure. So we can see from the center, there's like a green glow outwards. And then within this, there is another structure, clearly showing this idea of these different sheaths within the, the Birkeland current. And again, striking image, center point. Again, what we would expect to see in um, a Birkeland current and that Z pinch at the center again big question is what is that actually doing and this is another example again this one is the same description so astrophysicists will tell you that this was created by a binary star but again I have the same questions if that is true then why is material not being ejected up and down why only out along that plane and how on earth does it create such amazing beauty in that image just from randomly spewing out material between the binary star pair. Next up are the Herbig Harrow objects uh, and there are many many different examples of these types of objects but here we see a large plasma filament being ejected from an object over time. Now could this plasma be flowing out along a very strong Birkeland current going from dark mode to glow mode and are those brighter points that we see, are they actually Z pinches where arc discharge is taking place? Now, another question when we look at this image is the regularity at which those bright spots occur. Again, is the regularity, are we seeing some sort of standing wave being set up within the Birkeland current or it interacting with something in its environment that creates these uh, events? 
And again, it brings to mind some of the articles that have been written about stars forming on chains. Is this potentially a, a, a chain being formed where those brighter points will eventually be stars? The final example I want to leave you with is actually much closer to home. It is our own Milky Way. Now, normally we say that our Milky Way is a very quiet place when compared to other active galaxies. But scientists have recently discovered that this may not have always been the case. In 2010, Fermilabs discovered what they termed as ghostly gamma ray bubbles, extending out from the centre of the galaxy perpendicular for some 27,000 light years. Now, could this be the remains uh, of a z-point which formed our galaxy? So effectively, would the current be coming in along that bright line, uh, Burton current coming in and then going out on the bottom axes, and our galaxy would form at the centre, just like we saw in the Ant Nebula, but this is turned on its side, and a z-pinch would occur at the middle, and would that z-pinch create a galaxy? And as we've already seen in previous episodes, these filament structures exist throughout the universe. So could it be that these uh, filament Birkeland currents create the galaxies, which then create the stars? Again, that's something I want to cover in future episodes, uh, talking about how potentially in an electric universe, galaxies and stars might form. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed this brief look into the backbone of uh, electric and or plasma universe. As always, follow the evidence, be brave, be curious. The truth is waiting for us. Until next time.